This video is a quick start beginner's guide to Apple Motion. We're gonna build this super simple logo animation which you can use over and over again over inside of Final Cut Pro. To follow along with this video, there's a download link to the project files just under the like button in the description. Of course, you always need to open up Apple Motion. And when you first open up Apple Motion, you'll generally be greeted by the project browser. If you ever open Motion and it doesn't show you the project browser, you can always go up to the top left under File and then select New from Project Browser. The project browser has the Motion Project, Final Cut Effect, Final Cut Generator, Final Cut Transition, and Final Cut Title. All of the project types that have Final Cut Pro in the name mean that you can send them over to Final Cut Pro once you are done creating them. For this particular project, I'm gonna select the Final Cut Title. In the top right corner, you can see all of the various presets that you might need for resolution and frame rate. I recommend that you typically set this up to whatever you like to edit with in Final Cut Pro, so I like to edit in 4K, at the frame rate that you typically edit with in Final Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to change this over to 2997. Also, you can set the duration of your project. For this project, we'll just set it to three seconds. Once you're done, you can come down to the bottom right corner and push open. Whenever you create a Final Cut title project in Apple Motion, it's going to add in a type text here layer and title background. For clarity's sake, let's just go ahead and hold shift while selecting both of those and then push backspace to delete them. The first thing I want to add to this project is a background. And there's actually a whole lot of different backgrounds we can use directly inside of Apple Motion. To get access to them, go on up to the top left corner under the library tab. In the library, you'll notice that we have a ton of different assets all loaded into Apple Motion by default. The ones we want are found in the generators. Once you've selected generators, you'll see a whole bunch of extra options appear here at the bottom. Let's go ahead and select the two color ray. To apply this generator, you can either double click on it or you can just click and drag it directly into your project. You can also go ahead and just drag it directly into your layers tab. I'm gonna drag this directly into this group, which is here by default. And now we have the two color ray. To make changes with almost any object inside of Apple Motion, you'll always need to go to the top left and find the inspector tab. When you click on that, you'll see a whole bunch of other tabs show up here, properties, behaviors, filters, and generator. The one we want to make changes to this generator are found in the generators tab. There's a lot of different controls for each different object inside of Motion. For this generator, we have the option of changing the colors. So I'll go ahead and change this over to my branded colors. Then I can close that out. We can also change how many divisions there are. We can change the rotation. We can adjust the contrast. We can even add some waviness to it. And then at the bottom, you'll see that we have the inner cutoff and outer cutoff. I wanna animate this background drawing in. So we're gonna go ahead and do that by animating the outer cutoff. Let's find the first value that we want this animation to be at. So right now it's at 4096. Let's drag the slider down to zero. From there, we can come over to the right side and you'll see this dark gray diamond. If I hover over it, you'll notice that it says add a keyframe. I'm gonna click to add a keyframe and that will now change to a golden color. To animate this, we can now move our playhead ahead on the timeline for however long we want this animation to take place. I want this animation to be exactly one second, so we'll move our playhead to the one second mark, which we can see both here in the timeline and also in the time code. After that, we can come back over to the left side and drag the outer cut off to the full 100% value of that slider. You should immediately notice the two different keyframes appearing here in your timeline. If you're not seeing these keyframes, you'll need to go over to the right side of the timeline and you can select show or hide keyframes with this icon here. What's really cool about the keyframes in the timeline is that if we wanna speed the animation up, we can just select the keyframe and drag it to be a shorter animation or a longer animation. I still want it to be that one second value, so let's go ahead and just leave it where it was. If we push play, we can see our animation taking place. Now, while keyframes are a fundamental part of animating inside of Apple Motion, another super important key factor are parameter behaviors. Think of parameter behaviors almost as a preset animation that you can apply to different aspects of your objects inside of Apple Motion. 
So for example, let's say I want these rays to be rotating. To do so, we'll make sure we have our two color rays selected and we'll go over to the rotation value. Now I could of course come in and add a keyframe and move my playhead forward and animate that up and that animation would take place. But that comes with a lot of different drawbacks, which I won't get into right here and now, but I will show you the benefits of using the parameter behaviors. To add a parameter behavior, go next to the value and you should see this hidden down arrow appear. Clicking on that arrow will give you this extra menu and you can always go down to add parameter behavior and then select one of the different behaviors in this list. The one we want is the rate parameter. The rate parameter is going to continually add to the value of a parameter inside of motion. So what I mean by that is right now it is set to zero degrees. That means it's not going to add anything over the duration of our project. But if I were to change this to a value of 30, now that means that for every second this rate parameter is happening down here in the timeline, it's going to add a value of 30 degrees. So if we take our playhead back to the very beginning of the project and select our two color ray, you'll notice our rotation is at zero degrees. But if I move my playhead to the one second value, we can now see that it's at 30 degrees. Now due to the pace of frames and stuff like that inside of motion, you'll actually notice it's at 30.4 degrees, but that's a whole other technical conversation we don't have time for in this video. The important thing though, is if we push play, we now have it animating in and spinning. Another important factor of Apple Motion is working with various effects to get the end result you're looking for. Let's say I wanted this two color ray to look almost a little bit more three dimensional. To do that, we could select our two color ray, go up to filters, and we could go down to stylize and then select indent. You can go over to the left hand side and adjust all the various controls here to make the indent stronger or lighter. And you'll notice that that's almost giving us some sort of shading here in the background, which looks really cool. Another way you might use a stylized filter is to add in a basic vignette. Again, making sure that our two color ray is selected, We'll go to filters, go down to stylize, and this time we're going to select vignette. This works just like the vignette over inside of Final Cut Pro. We can adjust these on-screen controls to get the desired look. So I'll go ahead and shrink this down quite a bit, maybe open up that center. Then we can go over to the left side and adjust the darkening and lightening values as needed. I'm pretty happy with that result. So now that we have our background in place, I wanna go ahead and bring in a logo image. To do so, we can go to the top left hand corner and select import. You can also get that with command I. From there, I'm gonna select the logo I want to bring in and push import. It should be noted that Apple Motion can actually work with Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop files. So if that's easier for you, rather than working with a PNG, you can bring those in directly. With my logo imported, I want it to have a drop shadow so it pops a little bit more off the background. To add a drop shadow onto any object, you just need to go over into your properties panel. In your properties, you'll see stuff like position, rotation, scale, anchor point. You'll also find stuff like opacity and blend modes. And then here at the bottom, you'll see stuff like your drop shadow. Let's go ahead and enable that. But if you want further control, you'll need to come over to the right side and select show. Now we can go ahead and drag up the distance, increase the blur and increase the opacity to our liking. So now we can clearly see our logo popping off the screen. But I wanna add some nice dynamic animation to it. To do that, let's go ahead and make sure our logo is selected, then go over to the scale parameter, again found inside of the properties panel. Going to the right side of the scale parameter, we could add in keyframes and animate the scale to our liking, or we could let Apple Motion do the heavy lifting again with a parameter behavior. We'll click on this down arrow, select add parameter behavior, then we can select overshoot. The overshoot parameter behavior is a great way to add elasticity to your animations inside of motion. Taking a look at the overshoot parameter, you'll notice that the start value is set to 0%. This can be really confusing to beginners a lot of the time because it seems like it should be starting at a 0% value, meaning that this logo image is basically hidden because it's shrunk so small. However, what that overshoot parameter is actually saying is that it is affecting our image by 0%. So let's say I wanted to shrink our image by 10%. I'll go ahead and type in negative 10%. 
And now if we take our playhead to the very beginning of our project, selecting our logo image, you'll notice that our scale has gone down to 90%. It's subtracted 10% from the original 100% value. If we wanted to zero this out so it's starting from nothing and then popping into existence, we could select our overshoot value and change this over to negative 100%. So now it's starting out at zero and then over time, it's going to slowly pop into place. However, right now the animation is is incredibly slow because Apple Motion is stretching out the duration of this animation based on how long the overshoot parameter in the timeline is. Let's go ahead and shorten it down to one second in length. You can either select the overshoot parameter and push O, which will trim it down, or we can also just find the right hand side and drag it over to the left. So now pushing play, the animation will be quite a bit faster. There's also a lot of other controls we can adjust to get this animation looking just right. To make sure we know exactly what they're doing, I'm gonna go ahead and enable the keyframe editor, which can be found here on the right hand side with these three diamonds. We can actually see the animation path that our object is taking based off of these lines. And you'll notice that it's bouncing up past the end value, which is this dotted line, and then shrinking under and then over and back. So it's essentially got an elastic triple animation. To change that, let's go up and change these cycles from three down to one. So now it will only go up past the line once and down underneath and then extending on to its final position. Additionally, if we wanna really amp this animation up, we can drag up our acceleration. I'm gonna drag that way past and you'll notice that this curve has gone way up past the final value here, which is again, that dotted line. So let's push play and see how that animation is looking. Another super important aspect of working in Apple Motion is going to be with text. You'll always be able to find your text tool down here underneath the viewer. I'm gonna select that and then click anywhere I would like in the viewer for this text to appear. Let's just go ahead and get kind of close to the center and I'll type in whatever I want. To make changes to your text, you'll need to be over in the format settings under the text panel on the left hand side. We can adjust stuff like the scale, the font, the alignment, you can even change the tracking. And unlike Final Cut Pro, we can actually keyframe a lot of these aspects. So for example, if I wanted to, I could keyframe tracking to slowly get this text stretching out. Now I don't really like the placement of our text, so let's go ahead and get our arrow tool and we can click and drag directly on it and get Get it into position. We can use the on-screen controls to rotate it, position it, or if we want, we can even scale it up by clicking on one of these handles in the corner. And if you hold shift, it will lock the aspect ratio. Now, something that's super important to know is unlike the logo image that we brought in and added a drop shadow to, text gets a drop shadow in a different way. To apply a drop shadow to your text or to change the color of your text, you'll need to go over to the left side under the appearance tab. And here we can change the color face, although I like how the white color looks, but we can also add in a drop shadow. So I'll go ahead and add that in, drag up the distance, the blur, and the opacity. But a super powerful aspect of text inside of Apple Motion is all of the various animation presets that the Apple team has created for us. To apply them, we'll wanna make sure that our text is selected, then go up to behaviors, go down to text basic, and you can see an enormous amount of different options here. One of my favorites is the arrange in animation. So I'll go ahead and apply that and let's move our playhead to the very beginning. We'll push play and see how our text auto animates in super nicely. So now we have our animated text, we have our logo image popping in and we have a dynamic background. But I wanna close off this entire animation all at the same time. I don't wanna animate the various individual objects. And that is where groups come into play with Apple Motion. Taking a look in our layer panel, you'll notice that we have each individual layer, but we also have our group panel. If we apply an effect to this group panel, that effect will apply to all the layers inside of the group. I can also collapse a group to hide the individual layers. I like to use groups similar to an adjustment layer over in Final Cut Pro, or even in some cases, kind of like a comp over inside of After Effects. Let's go ahead and apply an animation to this entire group to close it out. Selecting our group, we'll go up to Filters, we'll go down to Distortion, and then we'll select Black Hole. 
We can already see the animation taking place, but we don't really want it to be happening over the entire project. So let's drag the amount down to zero. We'll go to the last second of our project, which is the two second mark, and we can add in a keyframe under the amount. We'll go to the very end of the animation and drag that amount all the way up until everything completely vanishes. Now I wanna smooth out this animation quite a bit and that is where the keyframe editor comes into play inside of Apple Motion. Making sure it's enabled here on the right hand side with these three diamonds, we can see that we have a straight linear line. I want to add some Bezier curves to this. Let's click and drag to create a box selection over both those keyframe points. Then I'm going to right click on one or the other keyframes, go to interpolation and select Bezier. You'll notice that the Bezier handles are now giving me this nice sloped curve, which is really going to smooth out our animation. If you want to make these curves more severe, we could select each individual keyframe and drag them over to the right or to the left. And if you hold shift, they're gonna lock to a specific axis, which is really nice. Let's push play and see how our final animation looks. And that's looking pretty good to me. So now that we've gone through the whole process of creating everything inside of Motion, there's one last super valuable technique I wanna show you, and that is publishing over to Final Cut Pro. Many of the different aspects of Apple Motion can be published to Final Cut Pro. So for example, let's go ahead and select our two color ray. Maybe we want the option of changing these colors when we're in Final Cut Pro. We don't wanna jump back into the Apple Motion project. So we'll select our object, come on over to the left side and find the colors that we wanna publish. We can click on this down arrow and you'll notice this option to publish. So once I've done that, this option will now be available in Final Cut Pro when I use this template. So you can get as crazy as you like and publish as many parameters as you want. You could even publish the rate parameters so you can change the speed of that spinning animation. It's really up to you how you want these parameters available to you inside the Final Cut Pro. The more you publish here in Motion, the more you're gonna have access to in Final Cut, which is incredibly powerful. But once you're ready and you've published everything you could possibly need, you're just gonna need to go up to File and then select Save. Because at the very beginning of this tutorial, we selected the final cut title preset, that means that Motion knows when we save this, we want to publish it over to Final Cut Pro. It's gonna bring up this simple dialog window asking you what you wanna call it. So let's just call it logo intro animation. You can also throw it into whatever category you like, and that includes previous plugins you've already installed. I wanna throw this into my tutorials category. You're not gonna have access to that tutorials category, but you can create a new category here at the very bottom under new category. Now that I've created my category, I could even add in a theme for further organization. I don't think that's super necessary for this project, so I'll go ahead and just select publish. Now that we've published this over to Final Cut Pro, to get access, you'll just need to open up your Final Cut Pro project. You can go to the top left corner, making sure you're in titles and generators and expand out your titles to find the specific category. I published this over to the tutorials category. Now that I've selected that, we can see a thumbnail preview of it here in Final Cut Pro. I can go ahead and just drag this down onto the timeline. And just like that, our animation takes place directly in our project. What's also super cool is I can come in and change this text to say whatever I want. I can go to the top right and go into the title inspector and we can change these colors to whatever we like. We can also slow down the speed of the animation. Let's say I want to set it to 10. So this video was just barely skimming the surface of everything you can do with Apple Motion, but hopefully it lays down some good groundwork for you to get started on your Apple Motion journey. If you wanna learn way more about Apple Motion, then I actually have an entire playlist with hundreds of videos about Apple Motion. If you wanna take your learning even a step further, I do have an Apple Motion Masterclass that you can sign up for using the links down below. It takes you all the way from knowing absolutely nothing about Motion to be being able to use it in your everyday professional life. It comes with nearly eight hours of in-depth Apple Motion training. I'm adding new bonus videos all the time. There's exclusive member-only live streams. There's an entire Discord channel. There's links down below as well as a special discount code for you as a thank you for watching this video. It's really just such an incredible place to be if you're serious about taking Apple Motion to the next level. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.